Did you, uh, Nancy, you didn't see that god awful picture? March 28th, you say? Uh, let me look. What god awful picture? Right. The, the banner that they made up for chat with the chief, they put mine and Mike's picture on. <laughs> no, they didn't. I'm like, Lord, we're going to have to see our picture in every garden in Leland. Oh. <laughs> I'm headed to it. Where'd it go? I know. I just seen it earlier today. Huh. I wonder if it's in April. Let me go to April. There it is. April the 4th at 9.30. I'm sorry, would you say 9.30? April the 4th at 9.30 a.m. And where's it going to be at? And I think that's Longleaf. I think that's what we said. That's the first time I've got to do that. Right. You like starting all over oh. again with it. At this time, we will call our public safety committee meeting to order. And I would ask that everyone stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. My ball. Are there any... Uh, Additions or deletions to the agenda as circulated? If not, I uh, will ask for a motion to approve the agenda. So moved. Ron, and a second? Yeah, I'll second it. Tom. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, passed. Uh, minutes have been circulated to every member, and hopefully you have read them. Uh, are there any edits? Deletions, additions to the minutes. No. If not, I have asked for a motion to approve the minutes as circulated. Will you move? So moved by Romy. Okay. And seconded I'll by Tom. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Seeing no public comment, we'll move on to the discussion. Pro uh, excuse me. I'm sorry. Let me make sure we're anyway. Oh, discussion topics. It looks like uh, Chief Grimes. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Oh, look how happy he is. <laughs> oh, it is, it, it is a good day. A good day. Upright and breathing. Um, I would uh, steer the committee over to your agenda packet on page seven. There is a, um, a drawing in there that will be discussed. Yep, I believe y'all have a bigger version. Awesome. Yes. Yeah. Good deal. Appreciate so, that. Um, to just kind of uh, uh, take with the group and kind of discuss a little bit further, uh, you recall in my discussion last month, we um, brought up the new ISO rating that would take effect in May. Um, and that way, Jay, I apologize. I, um, it should be in the uh, packet from last month if you've gotten it on email that you can go back and look that up. Well, if no, not, if you'll let me know, I'll be glad to email that back. I'll get that to Nancy. We can email it back out, um, the packet. But the uh, email, or excuse me, the uh, uh, ISO inspection that was done, um, we've already began to work on um, plans of improvement and um, looking at our um, capital plans, looking at our operations and stuff of that nature to continue to approve, improve upon that. 
And this drawing that you see is kind of uh, uh, moving forward from that inspection and looking at ways that we can uh, continue to improve uh, upon the services that we provide the citizens. So this drawing, um, we don't have it up on the screen screen, do we? Okay, that's fine. Um, you'll, you'll see um, the building that's almost dead center of the other buildings. And I, again, apologize, I'm not showing to you, but that is the existing building that uh, we currently have two fire engines in. So this is kind of a draft. It's still subject to some, some adjustments and stuff of that nature, but it's kind of uh, an idea uh, on paper of what that would look like. So as you're holding uh, the building with exactly like it appears in your packet. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. I would call that a herringbone. So the, the driveways would be down at the bottom of your paper. Um, that the, the first set of driveway that you come to would be the new driveway that will go into uh, the vehicle apparatus bay area. Um, and then the um, kind of the circle on the side with the plus symbols in it, that's going to be a stormwater pond. And then you see parking on the side that'll be just general parking for those that are visiting um, the firehouse. Um, and uh, there'll be a place in here for the um, uh, additional space for uh, public works. And then there will be an animal control shelter will be relocated here. And then there's gonna be a, for lack of a better term, an impound yard or a storage yard um, there that'll be fenced in, I believe is the plan for that. Um, so uh, it will serve, a, serve as an improvement for actually three different departments in the town. The police department will have space there. The public utilities uh, and public services departments will be able to have some additional space. Uh, and then we will actually build a fire facility that will be able to house full-time staff. If you recall from our tour, we have two vehicle bays in the existing public works building uh, or public services building. Um, and so we would come out of those two bays, move into the new fire facility, and then that would uh, give additional space for public services. Um, so, but this, would, this space is going to be designed and planned around full-time staffing. Um, so as the town continues to grow in, in size and scope, it's, it's going to need a pub or a fully paid, I shouldn't say fully paid, but a um, career oh, staff, yeah, yeah, career staff in that building 24 hours. Uh, so the current facility is not going to serve that. We have needs with other departments, so as part of this project we're um, working on, um, then our hope is to uh, build a permanent facility there that will allow us to house firefighters on a 24-hour basis. Um, and again, uh, I, I kind of asterisk at the end of that is that it's all subject to normal budgeting processes and things of that nature. So right now it's a, a draft plan, a scope that we're looking at and it's subject to funding as funding becomes available. So I'll be glad to answer okay. questions related to that. Yes, Mr. Chair. Um, a, f a few. Sure. Um, the area back with all the dots. Is okay. this unbuildable? Uh, I don't believe so. I, um, it's just th there's a small, I'll call it the fishing pond, is what we call it, but there's a little small pond in the back that's not a recognized, it, it, in other words, it's man made. It was not, um, to our knowledge, was not like a wetland or a low area or anything of like that nature. Okay. Um, and I understand this is a very rough draft, just a. Is there anything in concrete with this? I mean, as far as the footprint of the... We, we've identified the fact that we need to have career staff there. Right. I think that's about as far as concrete as it's become. <laughs> okay. um, again, just simply because we're early on in the budget process. So, um, you know, there's still a lot of, of time between now and July the 1st that, you know, could identify some setbacks. The... Um, yeah. I like this because I, I believe that that area, uh, that end of the town obviously is um, the part of the town that obviously needs facility like this. Um, 
to improve your response times and everything else. I, but I will tell you one thing that really kind of jumped out at me, and I don't want to go way back, but I drove a pumper for 18 years and a ladder truck or whatever. Um, I just, I cannot imagine pulling out of that and making the sharp turn onto Old Landville Road and coming up to go back to 17 and make about a 300 degree turn with what's a pumper, 15 to 20 ton maybe? No? Um, Aren't they pretty good? About, yeah, about uh, the, the, the ladder truck is 66,000 pounds oh, I and I think the that. pumpers are roughly 45, somewhere in 40, 45. Right, and the only thing I'm saying is, is I know that road, I go down there every Wednesday and Saturday. My wife has stuff for me to take over to the stump dump every, and um, Landville, that curve has got a bank to it. And I just think that it's gonna be an awful sharp turn on those pumpers. They're probably gonna end up going into the westbound or northbound lanes of Landville Road. I guess what I'm getting at is, as they did, I believe it's Northgate that's over by the CVS, where they're realigning, is that Northgate oh, Drive? Yes, mm -hmm. If, and I know that this would add to your budget, to possibly, uh, you know, look to have that ramp come across that property that's directly across from the firehouse straight out to Landville Road. Um, just to get that zigzag out of it, if you know what I'm saying. I, I think too, this, this is an internal draft. So we haven't, you know, this is kind of, we're trying to get a general idea and sense of what we can fit on the property um, in terms of what our departments require at this point. So this is a very, very early stage drawing. Obviously, you know, we would need to continue to improve upon it once we hired some more professional um, design team and things of that nature. So, you know, those kinds of things we would definitely need to take into account. And I'm sure John would, would be at the top of the list in terms of making sure that you know, those types of things are addressed. So again, this is just a very, very early internal draft that we put together. Just kind of wanting to, to give you an idea of, of how we're kind of moving forward with what we need to improve upon with the ISO rating that we did receive. And again, what other departments um, requirements that we have available, so. I, I understand, and I'm not sure if, if, if my questions or comments are maybe not appropriate for this committee, I'm not sure. But I just think, it's just, I mean, I get it, and I think it's a smart move on the town's part to utilize uh, an area they already occupy and own. It helps with cost, I get it, and it's in a good area. I just, um, and I know that you will do a good job of looking into all the ins and outs and making it, uh, to where this facility is going to be able to function at its best, you know. And and those are actually the comments that we're looking for. So don't don't feel that those questions or comments are out of place at all. You know, these are the things we we want to bring to you ahead of time. Um, while, like I said, we're we're in the budget process, working with council and things of that nature. So you know, feedback from you on specific items like this is exactly what we're looking for. So we appreciate that. Um, okay, then I, I've probably said enough. Anybody else? Tom? You have a, a little different question. Is there a uh, time frame uh, contingent on our ISO rating where, yeah, we need to do some improvements for the area? Is there a time frame, yeah, we need to have better coverage or response in, in that uh, area of the town? you know, within the next 12 months, 18 months, or anything like that, or? So in, in our discussions with the State Fire Marshal's Office, they would like to, because of the call volumes and stuff in that area, they would like for us to be working on this now. Mm -hmm. um, they have not indicated a, like a line in the sand type thing for these improvements. Um, again, it's part of that feedback document that they give us that they look at. Um, is we're seeing more and more development. That's where, when you look at these growth patterns, right. that's 
okay, for lack so of a better term, so ground, you ground zero. Them progress because mm -hmm. I've gone through some s similar situations, and that, that's one of the key clauses that you're showing progress. Correct. And you're being proactive. And, and, that, and that is precisely the words that State Fire Marshal Office uses. Yes, I know. They're, I think they're <laughs> universal. So. Yep. Every one of them use it throughout all the states. But that, that's what they're looking for is they, they recognize the rapid growth that we're going under. They understand the pressures and stuff that we're under, so they don't want to, like, be very specific in, in what they're dictating to us. Um, they want to continue to partner with us to get these improvements done. Um, so I, I spoke with Vernon Ward, who's the gentleman that did the assessment. Um, he, I spoke with him today um, about that. So we continue to conversate back and forth, exchanging emails, things of that nature, of ideas and thoughts. And hey, what is your, what is your thoughts about this? What is your, you know, what's your feedback? Because again, he's all over the state. He's seeing various ideas and stuff. And so it's a, a good resource for me as a chief to be able to, to pull that in. And he's a past chief as well. He he actually retired from uh, Pinecroft Setchfield uh, in the Greensboro area. So he is used to dealing with major metro and rapid growth and all that type of stuff. And Pinecroft Setchfield actually has two municipalities as well that they service. So. Okay. Okay. You want Jay? Chief, I'll echo basically what um, everybody said so far. Would you consider this at this point in the early stages uh, of like a, a retrofit of current of current infrastructure? Uh, no, sir. It's going to be a new facility. So okay. it it, um, it it is being designed. We're going to set this up in such a way that if we ever should need to add or there's a greater need for that facility, so the um, the, the the thought process we have going on now is this is an all metal building. You you can see there. There's additional space on um, either side of that that we would have the ability to add to the building should we need to. So um, one of the things that y'all have brought up is like police substations, um, you know, additional staffing being in this station. So there's space there that should the need come 10, 15 years that we have to add additional staff or resources into this building that it's modular in nature and stuff so that we can go back and add that. Okay, excellent. So to that point, as I'm a big believer for whatever it's worth in climate change and I, and I think we, we still have some some serious issues that we have to address long term uh, being a coastal community just like everybody else does and I know mm -hmm. you do too um, is there anything in here or in the plan the long range plan for if storms get worse and we call on more outside help uh, to help us deal with future disasters God forbid is there something in the plan that addresses housing or support for what they bring with them? For, for our staff mm -hmm. uh, and for emergency services, yes, sir. So we have, so you, uh, one of the things that will be forthcoming to council is a brand new emergency operation plan. I'm actually, it, there's a, I don't want to call it a final draft because the, all the right eyes have not hit it yet. But um, I'm reviewing it now for, you know, fit and form and, and things of that nature. But it includes identification of what some of those are. So Florence, a takeaway out of Florence is the senior center right down the road here. So we've reached out to the county because it's a, it's a Brunswick Senior Resource building. We've reached out to them. We weren't aware of it, and it's our own fault. But there's a full commercial kitchen in there that at the time the storm was completely stocked. So, but we had no way of using the building because there's no generator on it. So we're working um, with the county and the county's emergency services folks to be able to uh, put a fitting onto the side of the building that in the event of a storm, we just back a generator up, you know, lock it into the building and boom, we can power the building up um, and, and, and move forward. So, but those are, uh, for lack of a better term, lessons learned. And so we're starting to work with that. That building there, we've already, I could pull it out. We have a plan already in place for how we would sleep people in it, how we would feed people in it, how we could use some additional offices in that building. Um, the park area, we could set tents up. Uh, Division Drive, at least short term until it develops out, is was a great landing zone. It's good compacted, so we were able to get forklifts and stuff out there. So as we're doing these 
capital plans and adjustments and things of that nature, those are little things we're adding along the way. This building will have generator power. Um, so it'll be able to be generator powered. It will have the ability to sleep more than just a four person engine company. So we'll put bunk beds in, in the dormitory rooms. We'll have bunk beds. So in the event of a storm and we bring a bunch of staff in that we could sleep two to a room that maybe day in, day out, we'd only sleep one. Um, so th th those type of things, we're looking at elevations. I mean, they're, they're, like you say, there's a lot to look at. Excellent, thank you. Mm -hmm. Romy, mm -hmm. you have any questions? No. Okay. Uh, thanks, Chief. I, I just uh, would like to say uh, congratulations to your paramedics. Uh, saw the award. I ended up second, right? No, sir. That probably was a time hop post that they had resent. They uh, they did not finish in the top three this year. Oh, but they did. They went. They were invited back again and went back and competed. And unfortunately, you only know who the top three team were. So obviously, we're number four in the competition because that's our opinion. And um, but uh, they um, they you know served us well and continue to to see good. Uh, good feedback and stuff from those organizations and stuff that do these. That's great. That's Thank great. you. I appreciate that. And, and also, uh, I just read that uh, after Saturday, you're going to have a lot of bald firefighters. Uh, that's the local uh, is doing uh, St. Baldrick's. St. Baldrick's at the Joyce, right? Yes, sir. I, I think yeah. it's great when, you're, when your staff um, supports doing these community type events mm -hmm. and I think it's really important for all the public service, police, fire, EMS, uh, to to be that part of the community and really project that. Good. So, good job. I'll pass the word on to their leadership. Thank you. Okay. Um, Six point two, the fiscal year budget. Uh, how did I know it was going to be? Um, I know we had talked a little bit last month about where we are in the process of the budget. And again, we continue to have our monthly meetings with council. Um, we actually have one Monday. I don't recall what the date is, but Monday afternoon, we have another, our next budget meeting. Um, we did talk a little bit of last meeting and kind of what, what each department was looking at in terms of adding um, with fire, uh, a new engine and, or I guess a replacement engine and also a replacement ambulance, um, some equipment that's needed for replacement. Uh, including the big ticket items were um, the air packs on uh, radios and, um, and, the and the cardiac monitors to mm -hmm. replace the existing. So those are so those are some of the big ticket items in the the fire budget. Um, and then with police, we have a few of the new positions, an investigator position, um, and also a, an investigator, a sergeant position in the investigative division. Um, those are two new positions that would be added, um, and that would be more on the narcotic side, correct? Yes. So that would be their focus. Um, and then obviously just replacing some fleet vehicles and also the addition of new vehicles for the new hires. Um, so we, we kind of have a lot going on. Um, there, this is kind of a, a big year for equipment being replaced, um, updating equipment and things of that nature. Um, again, we do have our, our next budget meeting with council on Monday, so um, perhaps next meeting we may have some additional updates, but, but so far we're, we're still kind of on that path with those particular items. So I didn't know if you had any more feedback on any budget items or any questions. Yes. Time. See, um, I saw in the, in the minutes from, from last month, mm -hmm. um, we're you all working on a, on a, across the board, you're working on five years out, which mm -hmm. is tremendous. Um, kudos to, to everyone for, for doing that. It's important. I guess most of my focus was kind of on the police side and the response and uh, maybe the chief can or you can answer this for me as we look out though and I saw everything that you addressed uh, immediately as you look out over five years with our growth and our residential growth 
what do you envision to be your patrol staff uh, increases over the, over the next five years? Um, I'll let the chief speak a little bit on that, or or um, Sher Chief Shirley, Deputy Chief Shirley. I, I know in the plan initially our discussion was kind of looking at number of patrol officers based on population. Um, but after putting that plan together, um, Deputy Chief Shirley came on board and actually had some ideas, other ways we can evaluate looking at how many patrol per, or I guess sworn officers, um, whether it be by call volume, um, there's different, I guess, ways we can analyze that. And he had some good suggestions. So we'll kind of continue to incorporate different ideas in looking at that. Um, I know too with the new software that's going to be coming on, we'll have some, I guess, more user-friendly ways to look at the data to kind of see, you know, where the concentration of of crime is occurring, you know, what parts of the day, what areas and things of that nature, and be able to try to adjust some of the, the patrol shifts and schedules around that. Um, I don't know, do you want to talk a little bit more? Sure, yeah. But I'll let them, them talk, because I know they have some, some good ideas. So, uh, not to bore you with any dry data but if we look at staffing from a standpoint of workload assessment um, what what is the actual work that officers are doing and how many officers does it take to accomplish a task so there's several several different models um, the international association of chiefs of police talk about population a number of officers per 1000 um, there's also a time if we're spending a lot of time responding to calls because of our geographical boundaries. So there's little things that we can look at to make it more accurate as far as what we are, what's the expectation of the community, but also what's the expe expectation of the staff within the town. But not to lose sight of, you know, if we end up with 30,000 people, we're probably not going to be at the same staffing level we are now. So there, that's sometimes the easier formula to go through and sometimes it's something that everybody can truly grab a hold of and uh, I guess in the explanations or the presentations um, but what we don't want is to have staffing levels that are too low but we don't want to be overstaffed where we have people running all over each other and then there's a uh, an idea that maybe we're not using the taxpayer money you know efficiently so some things we'll look at and I think with a five-year plan I mean because that is such a living document um, our priorities may change from year to year and so we need to take a look at what those priorities are within the community and so you'll see probably changes with our goals and objectives every year as part of that five-year plan so we're not going to wait five years to readdress those uh, objectives you're not going to be reactionary you're going to be proactive that, that's our intent okay. that is our intent yes sir thank you chief do um these models you use or these uh, the data um, do they take into account sick leave leave injury and stuff like that I mean when you're talking about overstaffing um, we used to call it putting a little more meat on the bones to where you, you had a little bit of, of, of a fluff so to speak, not overdo it to where you run into, like you're saying, uh, the public feels like you're overstaffed. But you, you do need to have that little bit of fluff, right, for unanticipated sick leave, injury leave, and um, just personal leave. So, absolutely. And um, to your point, so part of the um, analysis is looking at your normal work hours in a year, but also going back and looking at time off for sick leave, vacation, training. Um, comp time, whatever. So you take all that into account to get a very accurate number of actual working hours. Um, so that is that is a component of the uh, workload assessment. Yes, sir. Thank you. Anyone else got anything? Most most analytics or analytic programs have that built built in. Well, you know, whether it's it. for yeah. a factory or for you know government yeah, service. Police, you know, fire, it's all the same. So yeah, I need, I need, right. Okay. Meeting schedule frequency. Uh. 
Hi, how are you? I just wanted to go over, staff's been reviewing the schedule for the various monthly committees and board meetings that the town has. And for efficiency's sake, we, are, we suggested that some of the boards and committees, including this one, um, change their schedule from a monthly meeting to a bi-monthly meeting. We've done it with the transportation oversight and the infrastructure committees. Um, we feel that for efficiency, bi-monthly, um, would be better for uh, the committee members because you would be able to have more stuff on the agenda. And if we need to have uh, a meeting on that off month, we can always schedule a special meeting um, and have the members attend for that. So we feel that at this time, that's what we'd like to do. We'd like to get your feedback on that. What's, what's the requirement for the special meeting, five days? Public knows. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, yeah. Mm -hmm. And we, the bylaws do not need to be changed because the bylaws specifically state for this committee that the meetings are held at a time set and agreed upon by the members. Um, so, um, and we can also at any time because of that change the meetings back to a monthly uh, schedule if we feel in the future that bi-monthly is not enough. Any discussion from anybody? Does anybody um, have? Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. No, I'm just, I was going to ask, do you have any feedback on it? Okay. Um, certainly no issue with, with it in, as, as a baseline, that question. Uh, my, my only concern thinking off the top of my head is that uh, two months without interaction, um, when, when something comes up that may not require a full meeting, but something that may be addressed or something that we need to address. Um, we could become a little dysfunctional in that regard mm -hmm. if we have that. Well, if we do realize that that is happening three to six months down the line, and we've only had, say, you know, a meeting every other month, we can switch it back. Um, but I think at this point, um, you know, a bi-monthly meeting would probably be uh, more efficient as far as uh, what we get, can put on the uh, agenda each month and. Mm -hmm you know, just all around. Okay, and we, we can't, as was previously trained uh, and advised on, we can't have an unofficial meeting. We no. can't have anything, I think it's more than f four or more, correct? Ex uh, three. Four would be a majority, so you can't okay. have more than three. Okay, all right. Yeah. Um, could you go over then quickly with us, if in fact one of us wanted to approach the chairman and say, I think we need to get together. There's some things that we need to talk about. Mm -hmm. um, well, then you would email me. We email, we email mm -hmm. you. And you would ask if it's something that if we could, I could schedule uh, a special meeting if you feel it warrants that. Okay. And we could do that at any time. Okay. I would prefer to run it through the chairman, have the chairman then just you could email. I mean, you. you can email both of us, the chairman and myself. Okay, yeah. fair enough. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then I would take care of, uh, after you have discussed it, scheduling. Um, notice for everyone for a special meeting. Okay, even if it may only be for one topic. Yeah, if you feel it's important enough to have a special meeting, yes. Okay. Mr. Chairman, is that our, okay, everybody? Yes, sure. Everyone make sense? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Let me, I'd like to ask a question. Is there, is the preparation for this meeting uh, uh, causing a, a drain or hardship on the uh, on people uh, making I reports or really bringing up any topics? I can't answer that question. I think actually, actually the, the other staff may be able to answer that a little better than me. But, okay. um, Just. you know, I don't have to prepare as much as everyone else. Let's put it that way at this point. Mm. I, I definitely, it's, just, it's not about the hardship. It's just about um, coming up with, with ideas topics. for the mm -hmm. discussion topics. Um, if we're not getting, you know, much feedback from the community, or, or and you're not hearing much, um, we feel like sometimes that, you know, maybe we could just do it bi-monthly and and still get the same information that you know we need to to kind of present to council or to have discussion on our end. So, but definitely no no hardship outside of getting ready for the meeting. Because a lot of this stuff is, it, it's just part of our our day to day operation activity. So. Okay. 
You know, I should mention, though, that this ultimately, this is only a staff recommendation. It is ultimately up to the board. Or, excuse me, you're not a board, the committee. Up to the committee. Yeah. Well, Mr. Chairman, I, I don't see why you can't for, um, why you can't just try that bi-monthly. Um, I know, and again, if you anticipate that there's going to be an issue that there needs to be a, a lot of input, then it's your prerogative to call the meeting? Is that right? I, I think what um, Ms. Sims was saying is if, if, any, if anyone feels like they've got something that's pressing, mm -hmm. that yeah, that would be the process, that's all. Okay. This is just copying and me also, in the you know, throughout the, on the off month and the bi-monthly, if there is any update, um, like for instance, on the agenda, we have the chiefs and the upcoming events. Mm -hmm. If an upcoming event does come and it's on an off month, I mean, obviously we would still notify you of that and you could still, um, you know, be aware right. of that. And well, if it doesn't, if you feel like it doesn't work out, then, you know, we can always we can switch all, it back. We always had a prerogative the, to go back. The problem, you know, we were just, at this point in time, because the, com the committee is rather new, and like Ms. Rhodes said, we're not getting a lot of feedback at this point, and things, until things pick up a little, uh, it might be a little hard to find things on a monthly basis to put on the agenda. Okay. Um, so anything I ask is if you do... Um, you make somebody make a motion and right. second to change it to bi monthly and that's I um I don't know if I'm speaking for Tom, but I know that um I apologize. I'm trying to make notes on what you're saying to see if I'm here. <laughs> yeah, so that's okay. What am I saying? <laughs> no, um that um I think this committee we want to feel like we're providing a service uh to you. The board, that's why you started this whole thing. Exactly. And yes, um, and I think I've mentioned it a couple of times, I've felt a little handcuffed with the restrictions of the way our meetings have to go and how we have to uh, talk to one another and things like that. But, but I get it. Mm -hmm. I understand that, that that's how it is and that's how it's got to be done. Um, and I know that you folks go through meetings all the time. And if you could maybe have one less that you don't have to deal with, I, I get it. I really do. That's just. Yeah, I, well, that's not actually probably not the point. That's not. No, not, I, yeah. I know that. But. Yeah. I, I guess I've, I've kind of been looking at this that our way of. Our, our really best way of getting input is probably going to be through the chiefs and their meet the chief, coffee with the chiefs and stuff uh -huh. like that and neighborhood watch um, unless two or three of us had a community thing that we could do but anyway I've probably said enough um, so at this time I, I, I don't see a problem with trying it and like you said we've always got the option of going back so if i could get a motion to go to a bi-monthly uh schedule beginning uh with the first meeting being in may yeah i should uh, also mention to you that yeah the, me the next meeting would be in yes. may um it, you do that and if you'll recall from the 2019 meeting list that was previously forwarded, that meeting is the third Tuesday of the month, the 21st instead of the second, because of the um, League Municipalities Conference. So the next meeting would then be May uh, 21st at 3 p.m. Okay. Um. And I will um, forward and send out to everyone a, a new 2019 list, meeting list, that would be on a bi-monthly basis if you do that. Okay. Um, so, does anyone want to make a motion to go to bi-monthly? Yeah. 
I'll make a motion that we meet uh, bi-monthly uh, unless there is a, uh, a situation that would warrant us meeting more frequently. Okay. So the motion is to go to bi-monthly meetings unless we are, unless we need to have a special meeting. All right. Okay. Is there a second? I'll second. And Jay seconds. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. All right. Okay, great. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, community feedback. Dennis. Or, oh, I'm sorry, Chief. No, I jumped into yeah. you. I'm sorry. You're right. I'm right. I don't know if there's some discussion. No. Yeah, just get in one second, Chief, if, if you wouldn't mind. Uh, Mr. Chairman, just on the back side of what we just did, now that we've done that, um, I'd like to express to everyone here and make sure that it's conveyed to the rest of the, the committee members that we make a conscientious effort, okay, not to forget about what we need to do, and I know everybody feels that way, okay? Um, I know, for one, there hasn't been a lot of interactive, as far as I know, a lot of interactive communication, either one-on-one -on -one or within the guidelines that we we abide by in order to have some communication between us as committee members. Um, I think we need to make a better effort there. I probably couldn't agree more. Okay. I, because I think we all want to be relevant. This committee wants to be relevant to the task and yes, I agree. Okay. Chief? Community feedback, is that from? If you have oh, if we have any community feedback? <coughs> Excuse me. Um, no, I have nothing new. You know, I, I'm hearing things that probably should go to the infrastructure. Um, I, I guess I would like to ask something. Uh, traffic, uh, roadways, traffic patterns, lights, turn signals, do, do all of those that are like along Village Road and things like that fall under the town's purview? No, those are all state. But, but the roadway, Village Road, is not yours, not the town's? It's maintained by the state. Okay. So, okay. So questions about about such things along state roads, uh, questions, comments would be have to be directed to the division office of DOT in this area. Actually, yeah, I could probably email you if you want uh, their information on who to contact for the DOT okay. if you'd like. Yeah, I, would I, have to, I, I do believe I have the person's uh, name and email. If you have a, 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 a DOT road you're asking specifically about? I, I, questions about signals, uh, roads, yeah. yeah I Why they do such and such. Yeah. Okay. All right. That's all, that's all I had as far as community uh, stuff. Anybody? Comments? Okay. Chief Jay. Now here, old and new business, and uh, Jay, I don't think when we brought this up the first time, you were not here, so we wanted to talk. If you had any questions about um, the Silver Alert program or the Safe Life program, we can answer those. It's just a follow-up, Chief. Um, I think it was December where um, we discussed it for the first time. Yes, sir. Um, I think we need it. Um, coming out of that. Uh, discussion, I didn't necessarily feel that um, it was viewed upon as being a priority. Um, so I just wanted to know whether or not you all discussed that, um, and if so, what was what was the outcome of that? Well, and I assume you're talking about the, the Safe Light program, that's what we're talking about. Yes, sir. Uh, we go through a process, and we have talked about it, and since Chief Shirley came on, he's kind of helping me with this, this task. What we look at is the number of wrecks, the, and we're looking at intersection wrecks where they are side, 
side crashes. And right now, what we're looking at, we have not got the numbers that would we would would need to to start that process. What we have found out in talking with the engineer over in Wilmington, there was a slight reduction in those side crashes, but they also saw an uptick in the rear end uh, rear end crashes because people trying to stop for that light. But again, this will be an ongoing process once that we see that we're starting to get more of those side crashes. Uh, we'll, we will start looking at this, but it, it'll be an ongoing process. And again, we're, we're hanging a lot on the new Zerker program. It's going to help us really predict a lot of stuff that, that we're going to be able to do differently. But we didn't just take it and, and put it away. It, it's an ongoing process that we'll, we'll all, in fact, Chief Shirley was getting some numbers on some stuff today uh, you know, about the, the safe lights and, and just trying to get some stats on that stuff. Okay. Um, as a follow-up to that, and thank you for that update, I appreciate it. Yes, sir. Uh, I run into numerous people, and, and just, I think we all do, we're all in cars every day. Right. And we drive our own car if we're not driving our, our business car. Um, is it everybody that runs a, a red light? No, obviously. But it's consistent. Every day I go out. Yeah. Um, Right outside here on Village Road, um, it could be over 17. I think is a, obviously I would, I would agree that 17 is is a big major, major issue, especially as you're in the 55 mile an hour zone area, and you're coming down to the 45 mile an hour zone area, um, or it's an area where somebody thinks that nobody really cares about, not not us. I'm talking right. about the driver, I'm or sure. it's late at night. Yes, sir. nobody's around. They'll run it. I think it's a matter of time before we have an issue. Yeah. Um, so that's just my own personal thought as, as a resident. Well, and what, we, what we're trying to do now, we're trying to get our cars you know, out there as visible as possible. Right. 17 uh, has its own set of issues of trying to get in and out of traffic and, and that kind of thing. But what we're trying to do is be as, as visible as possible to hopefully deter that type of activity. That would help. Yes, sir. Thanks, Chief. All right. Any? Do you have any follow-up on the civil alert program? Did Did you have any more questions? The, yes, on on that, and I I don't know whether there was any response, but there was an issue in Brunswick Forest. I'm going to say probably uh, Novemberish, mm -hmm. uh, where an elderly gentleman wandered away from home. Right. Um, uh, and I immediately thought about whether or not we had a program. Yes. And there's, whether it be Brunswick Forest, whether it be Magnolia Greens, whether it be Compass Point, whether it be whatever, we're a growing aging community. Um, a lot of ponds, yeah. all right, that are unfenced. Um, and as, these, as we continue to get older, um, I think it could be something that, to be proactive, as we talked about in some other areas, and maybe something that we may want to address as a township to let the residents know out there that there is a program and what can be done. But I don't know, maybe there already is a number that they already well, know to what, call. What will happen um, once, if someone walks away, wanders away, and the police is contacted, uh, we get the information. Uh, 911 will automatically make contact so the civil alert will go out. So that will go out immediately. But some of the other things, resources that we have, we, we have Sable helicopter that we've used uh, on a number of occasions when people have walked off. Um, we, correct me if I'm wrong, don't y'all have the rescue, water rescue team? Uh, we do, but we, for ponds, we wouldn't be able to, we'd have to call for some outside resources. Yeah. Oh, no, I'm sorry. We've got the um, public utilities boat. Okay. Public utilities has like a little 10 foot single wide john boat that you, you and I can pick up. Uh, you know, there's another thing that, that Ms. Brenda just reminded me of. Uh, the Sheriff's Department has a uh, program called Project Lifesaver. And what they do, they can put a, some type of bracelet uh, on them. And if they wander off, they have a way to track them. Uh, in fact, Chief Shirley has been looking into that. We were trying to see if two different agencies in the county 
could have that, and that's something that we will probably look at down the road. But right now, the Sheriff's Department will offer that to any resident of Brunswick County. And I'm not sure what is there a cost associated with, okay, no cost associated with that at all. And in the event that we have someone to walk off, I mean, we will call everybody and anybody that we can to help with, uh, assist us with. <laughs> Also, we have a K-9 now that's, that's trained in tracking, and the Sheriff's Office has several. So we would, we would get all the resources we could possibly get to, to help with that. Follow up then, I uh, appreciate that. Do you think we do a good enough job of marketing that? The, uh, marketing that to the total resident base in Leland Township, to, to all the residents, do you think they all know that? Uh, well, now I'm not sure about the project lifesaver. That's something that we had actually discussed and, and talked about maybe getting with the sheriff's office and maybe putting some of that stuff on our Facebook page and trying to push that information out. Uh, and I don't think that will be an issue, but we could probably do a better job at marketing that, and that's something that we, we will do. Okay, thank you. Yes, sir. Anything else for the chief? Thanks. Thank you, Chief. Um, staff Board Committee monthly reports. Is uh, anybody got anything about the reports that were circulated that uh, they want to bring up? Well, I do. Guess what? <laughs> <laughs> it's just something I didn't. That I didn't look pretty normal. Um, just a couple questions. I don't know if I should have brought this up uh, under old business or new business. Uh, Chief, this may help me generate some Chief Grimes. Uh, may help me generate some, oh, you can sit if you like. Um, some interaction with the residents in Magnolia Greens. The recent fire on Parkmore Court. Um, that's it's so strange because um, two or three years ago, we had the one down my street on Lindenwood that nobody was home and it pretty much burnt that one to the ground. It had a real head start. Uh, and they're right around, they're right, you know, like a block from my house. Both of them were. Um, to dispel some rumors, um, <laughs> Is still under everybody was talking. Probably need to be on the microphone. Everybody was talking about that it was the uh, dryer duct not being cleaned. That was the fire cause. Then I heard it was the electric panel for the uh, dryer. Any any idea on the cause? So at at this point, um, we're complete. We've completed our investigation, and we're continuing. The label is undetermined. We can't get a clear cause as to what it is um, specific to this fire. Um, however, I had been asked, uh, actually even by staff here, uh, about dryer lengths, uh, dryer fires and everything else. Number one cause of fires in the United States is... Electrical. Is dryer lint fires. Really? Dryer lint. Fires. So that's the thing you got to keep in mind. So electrical tends to be the larger loss fires and things of that nature, but there's a, a, a right frequent amount where people do not clean your dryers. So. Uh, the NFPA recommends that you have your dryers cleaned at least once a year, if not twice a year. So change your clocks, change your batteries, have your dryer, dryer vents cleaned is a good, a good rule of thumb, if you will, uh, about that. So. Well, I know the community email uh, in Magnolia Greens lit up asking for recommendations for dryer vent cleaners <laughs> right after the fire. I, yeah, I'd gotten rumor of that. And, and I encourage, if y'all see something like that, that we can jump on to help dispel uh, the rumor mills, but feel free to, to email uh, Nancy and myself and uh, Chief James and stuff like that. We'll be glad to jump. I, I'm on next door, but the, I don't know how I'm set up in there. But for whatever reason, I don't see... Uh, Mag Greens, Brunswick Forest, and that area, it, it stops at Waterford for whatever reason. I, it's probably operator error. Oh, um, maybe I can invite you. But uh, that'd Have be you? fine. I, I can say yeah, that in, in light of the uh, workload as becoming part of the town, uh, I don't have as much time on social media as I used to. Um, but it doesn't mean we can't 
you know, set some things up where I can monitor it and be able to see and jump on that. So, okay. um, but yeah, the specific to that fire, I cannot sit here and tell you that it was a dryer fire or whether it was electrical fire. Their insurance company has a little bit bigger pockets from an investigative standpoint. Um, so they're running some testing and things of that nature, but um, the um, uh, adjuster has not reported anything back to me. Generally, if they find something unusual or something that they'll they'll uh, shoot me an email or something of that nature back to let me know. The um, the other one that was really kind of more concerning, but it really died off quickly, was water pressure. Uh, there were people were saying that they didn't have enough pressure to get the water on the fire. Now I, I wasn't there, so yeah. I don't know. Did you run into that? Is not true. Okay. That is not true. The, wa the water pressure issue that was the next morning came from a water line break at the new office building that's being built where the old sales center used to be. So right there where Gusto's is on the right and they're building that new medical building. Yes. Right there, there was an a excavator that had cracked one of the lines. And so it had taken it a while to pull the pressures down enough for people to notice it and call in. And of course it was the weekend. And so H2Go didn't catch it. And so uh, once people started calling in, they were pretty quick to recognize it. But that's what that was. I'd heard that rumor as well also. Okay. That's all I had. Thank you. Yes, Chief. James. Mr. Chairman, uh, Chief Shirley had a good idea. Of, uh, would you like for the May 21st meeting, if I could get Bert Reeves, uh, he's a deputy with the Sheriff's Office, that's over the Project Lifesaver come in and kind of give you a brief overview of what the program is and what the... Yeah, sure. I, th I think that'd be good. Idea. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Okay. I will, uh, I will invite him and have him here at our next meeting. Okay. Right. Great. Thank you. Yeah, that's good. Um, anyone else got any more comments about police and fire? No? Um, any upcoming events or activities, chiefs, that you might... I, I realize it's, it's budget time and you're probably kind of crunch... Um, I was wondering if any of y'all have any. Yeah, so the chat with the Chiefs, we were just sitting there uh, going through that. Ch uh, chat with the Chiefs will be at 10 o'clock in the Long Leaf Room um, on April the 4th. And we didn't have that date at the time we published the agenda. So it's uh, April 4th at 10 o'clock a.m. in the long leaf room downstairs so as you come in the front door this is the one that's behind the, the meeting room that's behind the elevator well it's where we had our uh, class on the heavy meetings right now that was upstairs, that was upstairs so this but one, it's the one directly this, below it correct yes yeah, a smaller room okay yeah. Would you like some support for that? Uh, again, I think it has to be no more than, it can only be three of you, but again, any three that y'all choose would welcome. Um, actually, just like they're meeting the chiefs, they can meet the public safety committee members as well. I'm out of town, so um, if anybody April, wants to put their I name should, in now. I, I should be like here on April. Sure schedule. Okay. Um, why don't Nancy? Would you put a uh, an email to all the members, requesting if they would like to attend, and if you don't do it today, um, take the first three you get. It's that first Thursday in April. Yeah, no so again, is anyone for sure yet? I mean, yeah, you I'm, can go I'm putting try. it in. I, um, I'll, I'll be there. Okay. So Romy would be one. So take the. F I would like to, but I may be out of town because we've got like a, a wedding and a bunch of things going on uh, at the end of the month and through April. Well, get, get home and check your calendars, and um, you probably won't get an email from you till tomorrow. So. Yeah. Good. <coughs> All right. Is that going to be uh, publicized in? Um, by the 
Is that going to be publicized by by your department? Yes, sir. We'll work with Ms. Harlow and get that out on all our social media, and uh, probably we'll put a press release out to the news media as well to um, ask their assistance in getting the message out. Okay, thanks. And Mr. Yes. Chairman, I would I would uh, recommend that we at least talk to the people here on our committee and make sure that they talk to their community just to push that a little bit further right, right, so right. that we'll have a maximum amount of uh, participation. In the uh, Brunswick Forest, correct? Okay, Do you have access to a community-wide or just we your do. community? Community-wide. Could you make sure the Brunswick Forest gets it? Absolutely. Uh, I'll make sure that Magnolia Greens gets yeah. something. I know the people in Waterford. And I'll do Jackie's Creek. Jackie's area Creek. And, uh, okay. You know, a couple areas around town here. And maybe I can reach out to some other uh, through the property manager okay. for some other communities. Um, so, what is it? Is it billed as uh, chat with the chiefs or coffee? Because if you give them food, they'll show up, you know. <laughs> <laughs> or coffee. <laughs> chat with the chiefs. So the coffee with the cop is different than the chats with the chief. Um, and so we're get, getting through a couple of logistical issues with the, some promotional items for the coffee with the cop, but what we kind of envision is that will be something that, um, I don't know, hopefully periodically, maybe quarterly, we could host at different businesses throughout the uh, mm -hmm. town. So I'm hoping maybe by mid, late spring, we'll have our first one. And then from there, we'll kind of have a schedule. We'll just reach out to some local businesses and see if they want to host us. Okay. Maybe I misunderstood something. So the the May excuse me. This April, the next meeting is May twenty first. <laughs> April fourth is a. I thought it says chat with the chiefs, right. both right. chiefs. Okay. Right. Coffee with the cops is different. It's a separate program. Yes. I won't be at the coffee with the cops. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so chat with the chiefs, April fourth. Okay. They get food. We don't have that kind of budget. Yeah. Oh, get out of here. Yeah, you got to take care of the troops. I hear you. I hear you. <laughs> and, and if I may add, the Coffee with a Cop, that's an international program that started in Hawthorne, California, but it's a worldwide program. Um, so it's something we participated in in my other agency, and you'll see them pop up. And there's actually a national Coffee with a Cop day in October. So we'll certainly host one. Yeah, that like that too. Does it coincide with Fire Prevention Week? Well, it's Fire Prevention Month now, correct? Yeah, it's the whole month. So oh. October. Yes. We couldn't, we couldn't let them have all the glory for October. Atta boy. I guess we're getting old. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess. <laughs> it was it just, it was, day, and then it finally became it was a week when I was growing up. I was, yeah. Okay. Um, Mr. Chair, just for the record, we will have coffee and light hors d'oeuvres for, for, for the chat with the chiefs. There we go. Now I know what to put out. Sign me up then. <laughs> um, I, do, I did want to go back. How, Chief James, how close? So you don't need to get up. That's a yes or no answer. Or, or quick. Um, your reporting, your monthly reporting, you know, we've had, you and I have had discussions about it. And you say you're going to a new program. Do you know where that is and when that might? We're looking at uh, fall. Yeah, be fall, fall, fall okay. of the year when the Zerker will come online. Okay, good. Then um, is uh, Lieutenant Humphrey still doing that? Yes. Okay. Yes. I'll, I'll get with him. And I'm still going to get with you, Chief Jane, uh, Grimes. I want to see what your magic is where it comes from. <laughs> okay, if there's nothing else, I would uh, take a motion for an adjournment. Make a motion to adjourn. Okay, Jay, second? Yeah, I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, thank you.